Hi there. This is Sherry Hughes. I love cards. I'm a big paper crafter, so I tried to combine the two items together. I decided to make a cute little holder to put some cards in and a score pad and a pen to take to our camper. And the idea just mushroomed. I figured out that not only is that good for one deck of cards, but you can make it for two decks of cards as well. So this is really my first attempt at covering one of the books with something besides the artisan cardstock. I love my artisan cardstock. won't change it, but I just thought I'd experiment. This is from the Love Letters Collection. It's an exclusive paper found at Country Craft Creations. So I hope that you will go on their site. The link will be below to purchase some of this paper. Now, let's get started. Before we start covering our chipboard, I want to point out a couple of things to you. Inside, you will find two deep recessed pockets. They're strong enough to hold the cards. There's a magnetic clamp. This pencil holder here is a very similar pocket design to what I did with the cards, but on a small scale. Both sides have a magnetic closure this little mini ledger slides into a pocket. It's a flat pocket. That way you can change it when your scores fill up the whole pad, you can change it. And then it folds closed, but you'll notice there's not a lot of an abundance of room inside, so it's a tight fit. We have to do things in an organized fashion. And lastly, when we start decorating it, I'll show you a couple of the tips of how I did it. Um, I stamped this using the Gather at Home collection by Cartabella. So I'll, I'll share all this with you as time goes by and we run through this. So sit back and relax, take some notes, and let's make one of these beautiful card books. All right, so for us to get started, this outside cover is five and a half inches high by six inches wide. Now, that's important for you to realize when I make my notes, I will actually say how high by how wide. This will be the height. This will be the width. Okay? So, when I write down two and a half, uh, five and a half inches high, I mean this direction. And six inches wide, I mean this direction. And we need two of those. So, we're going to take our chipboard. And we're going to cut one piece, two piece, and then one that's five and a half by one inch. You also will want to place um, your score tape sheets, the double-sided adhesive sheets. You want to cut those the exact same size, the five and a half high by six inches wide, the five and a half by one inch wide. And you're going to actually put these onto your chipboard on one side. So to do that, I'll work with you on this. I want to bring in my scoreboard and I'm going to use it to be able to line up my score tape. So I peel off my score tape. If it's a big sheet, I only peel part of it and lay it down and then peel the other part off. But you just snug this, <laughs> snuggle this into the corner. Lay your double-sided adhesive sheet down. Smooth this down as you go. Burnish it so it'll stay on there forever. And that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing. Make sure I've got it cut in the right direction. Again, pull off my adhesive backing. Place this down onto here. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you're gonna screw that up, aren't you? <laughs> no. If I mess it up, all I have to do is cut another piece of chipboard. That's my philosophy. This is paper craft. The worst that can happen is it costs a little piece of paper or a piece of chipboard. Now I'm gonna use the one inch by five and a half. Again, same thing. 
snuggle it into the corner of your score pal, drop it off, and there you go. Now the hardest part of the whole thing is getting the liner off. It does take a fingernail. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one off and we're gonna cover our boy. Let me take a piece of the decorative paper, decide which side I wish to use. I want the outside to be this. So I'm going to cover it like this. Now to cover it, I'm gonna slide that into my score pal. Like this. This piece of paper is seven and a half inches high by eight inches wide. Okay, seven and a half inches high by eight inches wide. Okay, and we're going to use our spacers so that we can lay our chipboard down appropriately. Now remember, it looks funny because we don't have the artisan brown paper here. Uh, we're actually using the decorative paper. Let me pull it down for you. So I wanna make sure I have the eight inches along the top, and I wanna make sure I have the six inch piece of the chip, the six inch measurement of the chipboard along the top as well. This way, when I lay it down, snug into that corner, I will have a one inch margin all the way around my chipboard. And then I will burnish this down. And we'll cover this in just a moment. All right, now to make this into a cover, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm ever so slightly going to put, use my fingers to press down the edges. Now this fiber, you gotta train it a little bit and work with it to make sure that it will bend without tearing. You don't wanna use a real sharp edge to cut those paper fibers. You wanna just kinda of work it. You can see my tool here has a nice rounded edge and I'm using the rounded edge as much as I can. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see the reflection or not, but this will give me an edge to work with. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna slightly bend up my paper like this. And I'll fold it over carefully, burnish it down, making sure I keep it nice and flat. Okay, and I'll open that back up. Now I'm gonna do the same on this side. I know you guys get tired of watching the same old covers, so this might give you a different perspective. This is what you can do if you run out of artisan cardstock. But I am a paper whore, so I, I collect paper constantly. All right, now I'm gonna fold this one this way. I bet you do too. I bet you have your favorite colors and you have ample supply and stock of it so that you won't ever run out of your favorite collection or your favorite colors. I saw this Love Letters collection beginning when it was first shown to us and when it released enough that we could order it. I went ahead and ordered two packs. I mean, I loved it. I knew I would be using this for a lot of projects. I think I've made, ooh, I don't know, quite a few projects um, out of the Love Letters collection. I think I've showed you some of the projects. Um, let me take a moment and go ahead and show you a couple of the projects that I've done recently with it. In case you didn't see the other videos, I made this little mini portfolio. Gives us a nice pink look. Isn't that lovely? Just love that. In fact, I'm giving this one away to one lucky individual and mailing it to her. And this is another take on the love letters. This is the gray. The, yeah, same collection. Exact same collection, but with different color schemes. 
a different theme altogether, a little more elegant looking. Isn't that lovely? Just love these books. Love them. Tamara came out with these, golly, uh, 2020, December. She made a Christmas book out of them. But I have just, I've gone, I have just gone goo-goo over this collection. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably my favorite color scheme of all of them. Um, I love grays. I love browns. Now, that just gives you a little taste of what all they can do with that particular collection. All right, back to covering my book. I'm sorry. Am I in focus yet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I have carefully scored and bent all of my edges. Now, to wrap this around here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our score tape. I use a quarter inch score tape. Put it around my chipboard. Now, first of all, I'm not saying this is not my technique. I'm not even sure whose it is. I've seen so many wonderful, wonderful ideas of how you can cover your book covers. But this is the one that's kind of my go-to, a dear friend of mine, uh, Patricia Huber. I believe this is the one she showed me to start with that she fell in love with, and I yeah, have to agree. I like it, too. So I'm going around now and just putting some tape. Yes, I know it's not to the edge, and I know it's not going into that corner, but we're going to trim all that off anyway. I'm just kind of doing it quickly here. All right. I have a feeling you guys have seen enough of this that you're pretty familiar with it. Now, I'll be honest with you. The biggest trick is to make sure you burnish down all your tape. If you don't do that, your cover could fall apart. So just make sure you go through and burnish it every bit very well before you do anything else. Now, I'm going to miter my corners. To do that, let me see if I can show you. I'm going to go like this. Can you see that? I'm going to cut right up almost to the corner and make a nice little angle there. Can you see it okay? Okay. And I'm going to do all four corners that same way. All right. Now we're going to take our glue and we're going to apply it on here as well. Do you ever have a problem with your glue sticking? I have found the coolest thing. If you take, you know, these little silicone mats. I mean, I think I got this one at Stamping Up, actually. But I take my silicone mat and I cut it into little squares. I poke my pin through it and I keep it my glue just like that. Because this won't stick to glue, so I can always get it on and off. And when I drop it on the floor, I can find it. It's easy to spot. So just a hint, I know there's beautiful ways of organizing and embellishments that you can put on your glue, but that was just my favorite little tip. Now I'm gonna pull off my liner. I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way around. And I am hoping that you are not hearing my puppy dog snore. I don't have children, but I do have three fur babies that certainly can snore a little. All right, now, normally I do these two sides first and then the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna do my height first. I put a piece, a little bit of glue along this hinge then I'm going to add more glue like this. And I'm going to put a faint line of glue at the top here just to secure it down. I'm now going to burnish that over. 
And if any glue comes out, I need to wipe it off. I use a, a lint-free paper towel. I found that Viva, oh my goodness, Viva works beautifully when you're burnishing and removing glue. So you might try it sometime. See what you think. You can see how smooth that has made it. Now I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to take my glue, run it down that crease there. And again, just a little bit of glue along this. Now I'm going to run that over. Again, when the glue comes out, touch it with my Viva paper towel. And I'm wiping off my burnishing tool as well because I have glue on it. All right, now, now that I've got those two sides done, let me see how it looks on the front. It looks really good. I had pressed that down tightly. Now I'm going to take my burnishing tool and I'm going to edge where I just did the fold over very carefully there with my rounded edge. Make a nice crisp edge to it. Now we're going to do the other two sides. I'm going to fold this over, burnish it. Now we'll do the last one. And I will provide you with a cutting guide when I get done because I'm gonna give you options. I'm gonna give you the measurements for a regular deck of cards versus a deck of Uno cards. And I'm also gonna give you the cutting die for the single card holder as well. All right, and I'm rounding this off, making it nice and flat. Excellent. Beautiful. Now, I'm gonna take a pause here and we're going to do the other side off camera to speed things up and I'll be right back. All right, now we have both of our covers done, our front and our back covers. So we need to cover our spine. To cover the spine, we're gonna use our score pal. We cut our, design, our paper to seven and a half inches by four inches because our little spine piece that was chipboard was five and a half by one. So to make this work, because we want more space on the sides, we're going to put a one inch spacer at the top, a one and a half inch spacer on the side, pull our backing off, and Put that up into the corner there and lay it down. Now our spine should cover very easily. I'm going to burnish it down. I'm going to take this and run around the edge a little bit. Just like we did on the cover. creating just a little bit of a crease. Now I want to bend this over, kind of uh, train the paper to bend a little bit. Now remember, this is gonna be our spine, so we want it to be flexible, but we don't wanna tear it, so we're being very gentle with it. I'm just bending it back and forth a little bit there. Okay, now I'm gonna do the ends. Just like this. And I'm gonna take my burnishing tool and make sure that I've got this nice 
and flat. Just like that. Do the other side. So that we have a nice smooth fold. Okay. Now, for our spine, we're going to take our double stick tape and we're going to put it across the top here. We're going to put a little bit right across this. Trim that just a smidgen. Okay. We're going to peel that off and we're going to take our glue. We're going to run a little bit of glue on the inside. Just around that chipboard to hold it securely. Then we're going to go across it and back up to where the tape is. A little bit around the edge, just a smidgen, just to hold that paper nice and flush. Now we're going to take it, fold it over, and smooth that out. Get the extra glue off my burnishing tool. I need to smooth that up nice and close there. Now let's do the other side. Put it one piece across through here and a small piece here. Trim off the extra tape a little. Burnish that down. All right, pull this off so we can see the glue. Where to put the glue, I mean. Add a little bit down through here around the chipboard, go straight over and up. And now smooth that out. Excellent. Okay, so I should have now a nice clear Fine, with a nice crease to it and I'm being very careful not to puncture the paper I just want it to be able to fold nicely because here's what I like to do I'm going to rub this ever so slightly over it to crisp up those edges again on this side and on the very end here just like that now we have our spine ready to go in the book, in between our two covers. Now before I attach the covers and the spine, there's something I have to do. I have to actually distress the paper since I'm using the uh, printed paper instead of the artisan paper. I have to distress it a little bit. Now I have kind of fixed up myself a little distressing <laughs> workstation here. I use the Tim Holtz Distress Ink and Gathered Twig or the Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. Uh, today I'm going to be using the um, Gathered Twig. I'm going to ink it up and I'm just going to go around the edges of my paper, even around the top and the sides now if you'll notice on my little uh, plate here I have a sample of what the color looks like on the printed paper and on regular white artisan paper so I can kind of get an idea of what the true colors look like all right now that I've done that one, I'm going to quickly distress this one. But yes, 
you want to distress all the edges. And if you want to go onto the front a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit more richness, I like that a little bit. And we'll do the other one real quick. Get all my little points. Okay, now then, I will go back. All right, so let's attach our cover to our spine. We're going to look to see which direction the writing is. There we go. And look to see which what direction the writing is. And I'm gonna be attaching this spine onto the inside of the cover. I'm not gonna be attaching it on the outside. I'm gonna be attaching it on the inside. So to do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually burnish this just a smidgen. I'm going to take a little bit of tape. I have to turn it around, sorry. And I'm gonna place it right here. Now the reason why I'm not placing it up next to that edge, because when you have the spine there and you have that tape, it does show. So I don't want that to happen. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna burnish that. All right, I've got my tape on there. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut ever so slightly a little miter towards that center part. Now I'm gonna pull my tape backing off, apply some glue, just a little bit right down the inside here. And again, right through here. And I'm going to hold this up so that I can slide this right up next to the spine. So I've got them almost equal together. And then I'm going to put this over like and I'm off thumbs today okay that should do it let's see because we can always take it off and, and fix it oh that looks good see how smooth that spine looks now all right let's do that again we're going to bend this over a little bit. Bend it back just a smidgen. We're going to put our tape on there. Again, keep it at least an eighth of an inch. I prefer about a quarter of an inch from that edge. Trim off my little excess so it doesn't show when I get my book together. Burnish that down. Pull this up. Oh, before we pull that off, let's go ahead and angle that again. Like that. Pull this off. You know what I did, don't you? I put the tape on the wrong side. I did, I did. Have no fear. I love showing you that I am capable of making mistakes just like anybody else. Let me show you what I did here. When I bent it over to put the tape on, I flipped it over and did this side instead of actually doing this side. It's okay. I just pulled the tape back off before I glued. We're good, we're good. And we're gonna take our tape, apply it on the correct side this time. 
Don't you love it when they make a mistake on air? I do. I think it shows that we're human. All right. Little snip here, little snip there. And we're going to see if two out of three times is better. Pull that off. Pull that off. <laughs> now apply the glue. Just a small thin bead through here. A little bit here and here. I'll show you why it them. did not hurt anything at all. I'm checking the writing to make sure it's straight. Okay. Writing is correct there. Writing is correct there. Actually, I think I've got it backwards. There we go. So I'm going to butt it right up. Keep it nice and straight and smooth that down. Okay. Now, my spine lays perfectly flat. Okay. And my book looks awesome. Very good. Now, I'm going to cover all this with the spine cover anyway. So let me get the spine cover. All right, now, to cover the spine, we're going to need to use the brown artisan cardstock. We're going to have one piece that's five by three eighths high by five inches wide. And then we're going to make two pieces that are five and three eighths high by five and seven eighths wide that will actually be our covers for the inside. So now we're going to work on our cover for our spine. Okay, it's going to go just like this over top of that spine piece there. So we're going to take our burnishing tool and we're going to ever so slightly find that crease and lightly press down to bend that over and make it a good solid crease. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm using the pointed edge of my burnishing tool because I want it to get it down in the crease there. There we go. I want it to crease nicely, neatly. Okay. Now, once I get it in there, keeping it straight, I want to burnish that down. Do the same with the other side. As I learn things with this group, I'm sure there's probably an easier and better way to do this, but this is the easiest way that I have found. Okay, now that's going to fit nice and neatly over that spine connection there. And we're going to take this, flip it over. I'm going to cover this with more of my double stick tape. Right down the middle. Add one more little piece down here on the end. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a piece over here. And a piece over here. Just like that. Trim it. Let's see if I have any little hairs of adhesive. I don't want them to show. Okay, burnish that down.
Now I'm pulling off the center piece first. I'm gonna apply glue right here in the center. Just like that. And then I'm going to ease this up against the edge so I can kind of line it up a little bit. You don't, this is not very forgiving at this point, so you have to be accurate. We'll make sure it closes. Yes. Make sure it closes. Yes. And I'm going to burnish that down. I'll pop any excess glue. Now, we're going to pull off one side, add some glue. And we're going to lay it down. Burnish that and then fold. Burnish it so it stays nice and tight and fold. Flip it around. Let's do the same thing again. Pull this off. Add our glue. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off camera. Can you see it now? Let me make sure that you can see what I'm doing. I have my glue here. Fold this up, fold this over first, just like that. Brush it down, bring it up. Work with it just a little so that you can make sure it lays nice and flat. Get this out of the way. Now my book will lay nice and flat. And I can also fold it up. Excellent. Get off any other glue that's showing. All right. Now we're going to attach our mat on the front here. It's going to... It's going to go directly over that spine piece as well. But let me tell you, we're going to make a very narrow edge here. This needs to be a very narrow mat. The reason being, you want to give your spine extra room. And when you get ready to put your pockets in, especially on this side, you'll see that the there isn't going to be much room for error, so we're going to over-exaggerate it just a little bit. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go around it with my glue. And I am using art glitter glue. It's my glue of preference. And then I'm going to lay that down <laughs> directly on here. And yes, I know I've glued the front of it. I need to erase those marks on the back. I'll do that right now. All right, now let's put the other cover on. Let's make sure that we've got it the way we want it. And this time I'll put the glue on the side that has the writing so I don't have to do any erasing. Again, this is five and three eighths inch wide by five and seven eighths inch tall. And again, I'm gonna put it all the way out to the very edge. Okay, now, okay, now we have a nicely lined book. Now that we have the cover on, let's go ahead and add our mats. Now these mats are cut to five and three eighths by seven and five eighths. 
I'm going to attach them like this on my book. Maybe I'll do it this way. It'll look prettier that way. So I'm just going to attach those with a little bit of glue. And apply it directly to the artisan cardstock. It's not going to leave, but about a sixteenth of an inch showing of the artisan cardstock. But that's all we need. Okay. And we'll attach this one. Again, these are five and three eighths by five and seven eighths. This one down. There we go. All right. Now we have our cardstock on there. Let's add our mat for the inside spine. And this would be one of these. And it's going to be five and one quarter inch high by one inch wide. So we're going to glue this. Make sure you glue that on firmly. And we're going to attach it right here. Now we have our book pretty much completed. We just have to add the pockets for it. All right, now we're going to add the pocket in the back for the little mini ledger pad. It's gonna slide right into it. Notice that this pad needs to be butted up right next to the edge to give us enough room for our card holder. So we're going to take a piece of brown artisan cardstock four and a half inches high by four inches wide. And we're going to score this. We're going to score it at, with a four inch across the top, we're gonna to score it at a half inch, and we're gonna score it again at three and a half. On the four inch side, we score at the half inch and the three and a half. With the four and a half inch side on the top, we score at a half inch. Now, we're going to make a little pocket. So we have to miter this corner and miter this corner. And we're going to cut right across the X to miter our corners of our cup here. All right. Now, let's burnish this and fold it. Crease that. Crease this. Increase this, okay? Just like that. It will make a nice, pretty little pocket. Now, because I want this pad of paper to slide down in there easily, I'm gonna take a piece of scotch tape. Can't remember who showed this tip, but they did a fabulous job of coming up with something that would give it an edge to slide over. And then you take your glue. My glue's getting a workout today. And I'm gonna add glue on all three of those flaps at one time. That's right. Now you're probably gonna need to have a couple of clamps handy so that you can make sure this doesn't go anywhere. So don't put your pad in right away. I'm gonna get a couple of 
pins out. I don't want to stick anything in to give it any pressure, so I'm going to line it up here so you can see. And then I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to apply about a half an inch from the bottom. Let me get my paper towel here. I'm going to apply about a half inch from the bottom. It's not going to be critical one way or the other. Now I let mine slide over just a smidgen, but that's okay. Mistakes add character. Okay. So, again, there's my measurements that I used for it. Okay. Now, we're going to cover that. Before I cover that mat, I'm going to go ahead and leave the clamps on it for just a few minutes to let that hold nice and tight. Let me get my mat. All right. So, now that our clamps have helped us let this pocket dry, let's remove our clamps. Our mat to go on top of this should be three and seven eighths high by two and seven eighths across. That's three and seven eighths high by two and seven eighths across. So, I'm just going to simply glue that on there as well. Slide that into place. Perfect. Press down. And then when I get ready to put my little mat in, my little pad in, it'll look nice. All right. Now for the little bit more difficult portion of our <laughs> presentation here. To put the pocket for the cards in there, it has to be very sturdy and heavy duty, okay? I used the Artisan card stock and I placed it right up against the edge of this pocket. The reason why is I need that half inch right here for when I close my little pin cubby will not hit that way, see? So I have to be very careful. If you were going to make this pocket large enough for a regular size of cards, a regular card deck, you would need to not put in this pad of paper. Okay? You wouldn't have enough room to have this wide a pocket. You'd have to really cut it down. So we're going to make this pocket now, and we're going to insert it right here. So let's get busy. All right, now for our card pocket. These are our measurements. It looks a little complicated, so let me go over with it with you carefully here. The pocket is going to be three and three fourths inches high by four and three fourths inches wide. And then we're going to score it. You're going to need to have two of these because you're going to have a pocket here and a pocket here. So let's take our scoreboard. And we're going to score this with the four and three fourths. I'll lay it right here so you can see with me. The four and three fourths, you're going to score at a half inch, one and a quarter inch, one and three and a half inches, and four and a quarter inch. Turn this to the side and score along the three and three fourth inch side. And you're going to score at the half inch. And you're going to score at the one and a quarter inch. And this is going to give you the look that you're looking for. Now, we're going to have to do some folding and some cutting. So let me walk you through this. First, we're going to miter just the tiniest little bit 
from the outside edge to the first score line. From the outside edge to the first score line. That's simple enough, isn't it? Let me move this out of the way. Okay. Now we're going to cut on that same score line, okay? From where we cut the miter, we're going to cut directly up to this line right here. Are you with me? So you're going to cut this piece out right there. So all that's going to be left is this one little flap here. Okay? Now we're going to continue cutting. We're going to turn it just a smidgen. And we're going to cut from this edge over to that other score line. Okay? Now let's turn it around. And on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut where we did the miter here on the same score to the same score line. And then we're going to cut up this way. Just like that. Now, if you happen to angle that in a little bit, don't. You don't want it to angle in at all. Okay. Now, we're going to cut over to this line and over to this line. Okay, so here's what you've got. I'll lay it down so you can see it. You've got two flaps here, a solid side, and then the front of the pocket. This is the bottom of your pocket, and this is the flap that goes up behind it. So these are actually going to be tabs that help you fold all this together. Now to make it fold easily, you're going to do a little bit more mitering. You're just going to miter just a smidgen there and just a smidgen there and tiny bit there and a tiny bit here, just like that. Now let's do the other side. Just a tiny bit there, tiny bit there, and a tiny bit there, okay? Now you should have something that looks like this. See, these are your half inch and your one and a quarter inch marks. You can see we did that the same way. All right. Now we're going to fold all these lines and we're going to burnish them down. There's two. Let's fold this one over. Burnish it. Fold this one over, burnish it. Again, the other side. Okay, now this is the pocket. I'm going to hold the pocket like this so that I can start down here at the bottom and fold over this bottom fold. Increase it. Fold this over, increase it. Now, all of your lines have been creased. Now, watch what I'm doing here. I'm gonna take these two little tabs and pull them in. I'm going to take that and bend it over inside of this tab, just like that. And then I'm going to fold it up, 
just like this. And this is the pocket that we'll place on to our book. See? Now, to glue all of that, the first thing you're going to do is glue this flap and this flap. So we're going to pull this flap over and apply a little bit of glue. Pull this flap over, apply a little bit of glue. Pull that in, line it up nice and straight, and attach that tab. Now you're going to have to do some serious eyeballing here to get that nice and straight before it dries. Okay? It's got to butt up and make a nice corner. And then hold it for just a moment while it dries. Now we're going to apply glue on the next flap, the one we were holding. Okay. And we're going to pull this one up and wrap that around, making it sure it's nice and square. Hold it. Line the other one up. Make sure it's nice and square. And press it down so that you can see that it's nice and square. See the bottom is nice and even. This side is nice and even. Very good. Now we're going to glue. We can't do much until that dries. Okay. The only thing we can hope to do is to glue the flaps on down. But if we do that, before that dries, it'll pull apart. So give it a few minutes to set before you do the extra, the next step in gluing. Now you may want to take a quick, a quick screenshot of this before we do anything else. This is how it was scored and folded and the mitered edges were cut. Now to save time, I went ahead and folded the other pocket. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the glue a little bit to this tab. And a little bit to that tab and hold that over this way it'll be nice and square this is where I would recommend you take some binding clips and clip that and you're going to hold that or have the binding clip hold it until that dries thoroughly now when that gets dry, which it doesn't take long for this glue to dry, we're going to mount this in our book. And it's going to go right about there. Look at the finished product again. Slide them both into frame so you can see them. You're going to mount this just about here. And you want it straight with the bottom because when you close this, you want to leave enough room that this pin holder won't butt up against it. Now, again, this pocket is for an Uno size card. It will not hold a regular deck of cards unless it's a bridge deck. I've noticed that the bridge decks are slightly slimmer than, say, a poker deck. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and glue it down to our book. You want this to support the weight, so you don't want to put just a little bit of glue. You want to put plenty. And I'm going to lay it down right there. I think that looks lovely. I'm making sure it's nice and square. Just to make it easier, I'm putting a deck of cards in there. And I can press down all my sides nicely using the deck of cards as a straightening tool and a, a good edge. If there's any excess glue, wipe it off. So use your card deck to help you place that. 
Okay. Leave the card deck in there while you put your mat on. Now, the little mat that goes on the front of this is two and three eighths by two and an eighth. And since we're doing two of these, you need to cut two pieces. And you're going to cut that two and three eighths by two and an eighth. And I'm relatively sure that I cut that. Let me find it. There we go. But now we can't put that on there just yet because we're going to be adding magnets. I'm going to pull the little paper. I'm going to pull a little bit of paper off of those. Just like that. And I'm going to place that right in the middle, down just enough that I can press down paper on that mat to secure it. And then I'm going to press that down. Okay. So I've got the one magnet pressed in place. And I'm going to put this paper over top of it. Now, what I do to place the paper over top of it is I take a big piece of score tape and I place that over the magnet. Just like that. Again, I'm leaving the cards in there so I have something firm to work against. Now I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to glue the back of this. Notice I put a note, put magnet under because I know me. I'm so nervous on these beginning tutorials that I do things halfway and I rush it. So I don't want to rush this. Now I'm going to stick this down just like that. I'm going to try to burnish it just a little bit. It's a little hard since it's on these cards. And I'm going to press up just a smidgen so I don't press it too far down. Now that we've completed the pocket on the back, we can do the placement of the pocket on the front. If you look here, you'll see they do slide side by side. Let me put the cards in there so you can see a little more clearly. Can you see that? That they are butted right up next to each other. Okay? Now, if you're using regular cards, you'll have to slide them further apart because regular cards are wider. These are more of a bridge card size. I may have said that earlier, but I want to make sure I point that out again because this is for Uno cards, which are much more narrow. If you're going to do a larger size card, you're going to have to slide them further apart so that this first pocket would have to go way over. And I'm not sure that you'd be able to leave that pad in. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the pocket that I've already constructed for us and I need it to match up. So I'm going to turn it over just like this. I'm going to put our cards in there to weight them down. Sorry, I have to keep pulling them in and out for you. Slide that down in there. Slide that down in there. Okay. Now, that's how I want it to lay. Okay? That's how I want it to lay. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put glue on there, or you can use some score tape. Let's use a little bit of score tape just to make sure that stays nice and flat. So I'm going to put just a little bit of score tape right down the middle. Okay, a little bit on the bottom there. And down that side, like that. Plus, there's one more thing I want to do. 
I didn't do it on the other pocket. I forgot it, so I'm going to show you right now so that you won't forget. Take a piece of scotch tape. Cut it the width of your pocket. And I want you to stick that inside the pocket, the sticky sides up, but I want it to go right across the bottom there because when I insert the cards, I don't want it to hit that back lip, okay? So I am putting, hoping that that tape will make it a smoother transition. Now I'm gonna remove the backing off of my tape. I know I've showed you two different ways to put these on. I'm sorry, but it gives you two options, I think. And did I score it and burnish it down? No, I forgot. Okay, that's all right. We're going to actually do it when I get this on. I'm just adding a little bit of glue around the edges. Putting my card back in there because I have to work with it. All right, I'm gonna scoot it over just a smidge in there. Okay, and now, is it lined up? Let me look, stick my head in there. And press down. Hold it so that when it comes over. Yes, okay. Now, it slides side by side. That's what we want. Now, using your cards, you want to press that down firmly. Take the cards out. Use a crease tool that you have and press that down. Okay, nice. And that scotch tape, I'm going to use my fingers. Let me see if I've got a little mat to go on the front of that. I do, so we're going to go ahead and put that on. So, let me quiz you. What's the first thing I have to put on? i got to put the magnet on underneath that. So, let me get a pair of magnets. Okay. Alrighty. Pull the backing off of one. And I'm going to position it in the middle. I don't want it too far down because I've got to put a tab. Remember? We've got a tab to go on there. I think that's pretty close. Press it down, remove the top one, and glue this down. There is something to be said about being nervous on camera. It makes you do silly things. It makes you do really silly things, and I'll explain that in a minute what I've been doing. It's so silly, but I'm going to place that on there. I want it the same distance all the way around and I could have distressed it to make it a little bit more uniform but I'm in a hurry if you want to distress it you go right ahead all right now we're at even Steven on our book okay we're doing great now we've got to add the tabs so I'm going to take that out the tab closure that we're going to use is six inches by one inch. We're going to score that. Let me see if I can get this in here for you. We're going to score on the six inch side, just like this, at the one and three fourths, and again at the two and a half. That was one and three fourths, and again at the two and a half. You're going to need two of these. So be sure and go ahead and score both of them. And I've already done the other one, I believe. I did. Okay, so I'm going to stick that in there. Now, we're going to fold this and burnish it. Fold and burnish it. So that when you put this down in there, the tab will come over. Let me stick it down in there. Put my cards in. See, the tab goes perfectly over the cards that way. And yes, it goes over the magnet. So, 
what we're going to do is we're going to glue that in place. I'm going to use glue because I may need a little wiggle room. And I'm just going to glue the bottom portion of that so that it folds like that. And I'm going to put it down in my pocket, like so, getting in the center of the pocket. I'm going to put my cards in just so I can put some weight on it. And make sure that it lines up nice and neatly. It does. So I'll press that down firmly. Good. Use my finger. Okay, that tab is in there. All right. So now we're going to need to put the matting on our tab. All right, now that we have the other one pocket done, we're going to put our mat on the tab itself, and we're going to cut it to 2 and 3 eighths by 7 eighths. And on this long side, you're going to score it at 1 and 5 eighths. So it's scored right there at 1 and 5 eighths from that end. Now I'm going to bend that, and I'm going to burnish it down. Apply it to the top of my tab. Let's see here. Just like that. And I'm going to glue that in place. All thumbs today. Okay. Smooth that out. Very good. And that will dry pretty well there. I'll get that extra glue off. Alrighty. Move all this out of the way. I'll repeat the same thing for the other tab. Insert the tab. Glue it down. Add the scotch tape. Then put my tab cover on it. And now we've got the tab attached on both sides. If you'll remember, we still have to attach our magnet. You can tell I've worn this one showing it on film. All right, and I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my backing off of this top magnet, like that. I'm gonna take my tab over, press down. Now, if you were to repeatedly open this tab, this artisan cardstock would be good, but it's not going to hold firmly forever. So let's make it a little stronger. And this is probably my favorite trick to share with you the entire video. What I do is I take a, a punch, or I'm sorry, I take a die, like this label die here, and I punch out a shape. Okay, this is on very thick black cardstock. Then if I take my scoreboard and I use these center points of the punch, lay them down on the same line, use my stylus and draw a line with it up and down to score it right in the middle. Can you see that? All right, now I'm going to fold that, making sure it evenly matches. Lovely. All right, we already have the magnet attached. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this in place over the end like that. Now, if your paper shows outside, you'll need to trim it just a little. I don't think mine's showing, so I'm not going to have to trim it, but I am going to put some glue on there. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see what I'm doing here. Very good. Okay. Line that up nicely. Make sure I'm not showing too much of the, t the brown paper. 
Sweet. There we go. Is it even? I believe it is. I hate things not, not even. All right. Now we just let this dry. I use a little clip, of course, to help dry this quicker. We'll let that dry while we do the other side firmly to make sure they hold. Okay, put the clamps on this side. Alrighty. Now let's work with this side again. This makes a nice latch, but to decorate it, what I did was I used a couple of padlocks that came from the Tim Holtz locks and keys set. These are smaller. This is the larger set. So what we're going to do is apply this lock to the front there, just like that. That's heavy, so it's going to have to be mounted on there with something other than art glitter glue. It's going to have to be mounted with super glue. Now, with super glue, what I do is I go to Dollar Tree and I get these single-use super glues, and I use that. So I take my single use super glue and what I do is I cover it with scotch tape. No joke. It will hold and work beautifully. I've been using this one for several days now. Just be aware that a little bit will go a long way and you do not want to get this on your finger. It's very runny. Can you see how much I'm applying there? Just a little bit. Now, I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to try to center it. Drop it in place. And then leave it alone. Okay. Let's do the other side while we're at it. And then we can let it dry while we work on something else. So I'll take my super glue, add a little bit to the back. Ooh, that's a lot. Didn't mean to put that much. And drop that in place. All right. Let's let that sit. Just like that. Now, when I'm through using it, what I do is I take a piece of scotch tape and I put the tip in there. I seal the scotch tape up all the way around it and then I just peel off my scotch tape and I can use it again next time. Is that not awesome? I just love that. It just helps so much. It goes so much further that way. Okay. There's your handy tip for the day. Don't forget you can get the uh, locks and keys at Country Craft Creations. That's where I got mine. Love those. Love them, love them. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And while we're going to let that dry, we're going to work on this pocket in the center. It holds a regular pin. And I just did some embellishments on there. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so our next task is doing the pin pocket. I cut my paper. It's the brown artisan cardstock. I cut it four inches by two and a half inches wide. Then I scored this on this two and a half inch side. I scored it at the half inch. The one inch, the one and a half inch, and the two inch. Then I turned it on the long side. I scored it a half inch, and again at the one inch. All right, so what we're going to do this time, we're going to, before we start actually folding our lines we're going to do a little clipping with our scissors and 
and we're going to clip this top line here all the way over to this point here. Let me see if I can bring that in a little bit for you. So I'm going to clip from here over to there. I'm going to clip from here over to there. I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing. Clip it over to there. Clip it over to that center. You want to leave this center half inch without any cutting. Okay? This is going to be the front of your pin pocket. This is going to be your side. And this is going to be the back. Okay? Now, we're going to simply cut this up and this up. Are you with me there? Okay. I'm going to miter my cuts just a little bit. Not much. Just miter them a smidgen. So everything folds in nice and neatly. I have found that if I do this on my pockets, it makes a much better and smoother fold. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Snip this one just a little. And this one. Again. And the bottom one. And that's what we have. Don't worry about that little score line that I drew with my score, with my um, scoring tool a second ago. All right, now I'm going to fold this and I'm going to use my burnishing tool so I can get all of my folds nice and even. You do need to make sure that these are nice and crisp. Okay. And the last one here. Excellent. See, that's going to fold up nicely to be our pin box. And what we're going to do is the same thing we did to begin with, where we're going to glue this to this. Like that. That's our first step, okay? So let's go ahead and apply a little bit of glue on this outside tab. Fold it in and hold it. Make sure it's nice and square, that it's against the back. It's hard for me to do up in the air, so I'm going to lay it back down. And then I'm going to do the other side so I can quickly square it. Because I need that to angle in. See, that's going to be our base for the pin to slide into. That's the bottom of our little pocket. Okay. There we go. That wasn't so hard, was it? Did you get that? All right, now, you can tell that this is going to go up like this. So, you're going to find that this one's going to get glued and this one's going to get glued. Then we'll go back and glue the other side as well, okay? So, we're going to do a double reinforcement on the back. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to glue here, here, and here. Okay, so I'm, when I fold this, I've got glue on all three flaps. Now, if you look at the bottom, wipe off the excess, you can see it's square. Hold this firmly in place for a moment. Let that glue hold. Do a little jig, sing a song. Dun, 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 dun. I can picture all of you sitting around doing your jigs. Alrighty, that's looking good. 
All right, now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna apply a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here and here. But now this time, instead of just on those, we're gonna go all the way up on this one fold because it's gonna overlap and attach like this. Now, I took a pair of long tweezers that I have and I pressed inside of it up against myself so I could make sure that holds firmly. Find something long and narrow. If nothing else, use a pin. Now, I think I folded mine over just a little bit too far because it's going to make it oblong. So let's take that back just a smidgen. It's not too late. The glue will move no problem see when i turned it over it was pulling so i want to make sure it's square so i'm going to go back and glue now again making sure that it's nice and square the luck i've been having today during filming means i need to double check that carefully <laughs> Just like that. Now, when we put it in our book, it'll look great. Okay. We have little mats that we cut out of the love letter paper. And they're two and seven eighths by three eighths. They're small little pieces, but they really add to the uh, finished look. And you need three of those. You're going to put one on the front let me go ahead and just put a bead of glue down like this. A little too high there. Stick my mat on there. And I'm gonna finagle it just a smidgen. I want it to look pretty straight from the front. There we go. And then I'll do my other two. I'll just turn it on the side, do a little piece of glue down through here. Again, add it to be kind of uniform. And the last one. Sorry, I forgot to mute my computer. All right. Now, before you attach this in the book, now that's great, guys. That looks just great. So, before we attach it in our book, let me cap my glue. All right, I'm going to take my distressing tool, and I'm just going to go around those edges. Because on this, it shows up. The edges of those papers and I want to make it look good alrighty there's someone outside and I'm praying that my fur babies don't start barking we're gonna hope all right now that we've got that done I'll put that away we're going to attach that in our book pull it back out a little we're going to be attaching it here. So let me get our book. We're going to attach it right here. Now I'll warn you, this book is not high enough to keep the pen from going over the edge, no matter where you place it. Since we didn't really want a book that big, I figured it would be safer to go ahead and place the pen sticking out just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my pen in there. I'm going to apply some score tape on the back. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue with that. We want it to hold secure. 
Okay. Maybe off camera. Sorry. Got to get used to doing that. Okay. And we stick our pocket on there and we hold it in place with our pin in the center. Do, 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 do. And this is another time that you do the sing and the dance. All right. And this is the last of our pockets. We've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. Four pockets within it. And they're all different. Well, these two are the same size. But they're different styles and types of pockets. Very good. I think that'll hold when it dries. It'll be perfect. Now, the next thing is we're going to take our little pad that goes here. And we're going to do a wrap around it. You can use whatever pad you like, whether it be lined or unlined. I ordered mine from Amazon. Um, I couldn't find any locally. And for the wrap, let's see, what are the measurements of that little wrap? I'm not even sure if I wrote them down. I didn't because it's going to require you to measure your pad of paper to see how wide it is. Okay, so what I do is I lay it on there. I fold just a little bit like that around it so I can make sure it's going to be nice and tight. And then I take my burnishing tool and crease it. Now I take it back off. No point making it complicated, just, you know. You're going to need to fold it to whatever size your pad is. I think I extended it just a little bit, but that's okay. And now I'm going to fold. I maybe should have scored that. That would have made it easier to fold. Okay. Now, I'm going to glue this on like so. So, let's take our glue that. If you'll notice, I do wrap only the top part. There's no point wasting this beautiful, beautiful paper going all the way down the back of the pad. Um, I do want it to cover the top that's seen, but when they're disposed of, there's really no point to cover all the way down the back. And then I'm going to crisp that up just a smidgen. There we go. And it is ready to actually slide down into our pocket. Easy peasy. My favorite saying in the whole wide world, and I stuck it in crooked, so let me get it straight. There we go. Now, I'm going to attach that little key. How do I attach it? Not with the art glitter glue. We're going to use our super glue again and apply it to this. And I better lay it down because I don't want it all over my fingers. And I've learned the hard way with this. <laughs> you have no idea when you uh, <laughs> get this on you how hard it is to get off. I'll seal that again in a second. It'll be all right for just a moment. Now I'm going to pick this up carefully. And I'm going to lay it down on top of my pad. And I did get some glue on there. Now, I will tell you that I used a little bit of a mat underneath it to decorate it just a little bit more. I didn't do that here, but you can see that that's what I did. And we're going to set that to the side and let it dry because what we're going to work on now is this piece right here. Okay? We're going to do a little bit of stamping. So let me grab my stamping stuff. So now we're finished. Our working parts are there. Our key is solid. Our pen is great. We need now to do a rubber stamp of this saying right here. I am a rubber stamper big time. Uh, that is the craft that I've done for years. Since 1986, I've been a rubber stamper. Even at one point, manufactured rubber stamps. Loved them that much. So just so you'll know, that's my true passion. And Cartabella has come out with a set that 
Country Craft Creations is carrying. And I love, the, love, love the Gather at Home set. Isn't that a gorgeous set? I mean, what can you say? It's got so many elements to it that you can use for so many different things. Uh, what I liked was the chair. Make it look like you sit and stay a while. And it's got two different stay a while type sayings. I like this, let's stay home. So what I did was I stamped it. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with rubber stamping, simple, easy to do. You can use an acrylic block or you can use a any type of Stamparatus, Misty, anything that will allow you to place your stamps into a specific location like this and like this. You just stick it on there, place it the way you want, line them up, close your top, and the stamp, when you press down, will stick to the lid. Then all you do is place a piece of paper, let me see if I can grab one here, into your Misty, and you use magnets to hold that paper down and to keep it in place. You ink it up. Now, I'm going to use uh, Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. It's the Ground Espresso. I like this brown color. So, we're going to take it and we're going to ink it up. And if you make a boo-boo and you don't um, ink it all up, that's okay. Because with this type of apparatus, you get to place it two or three times. You can re-ink it over and over again. So I can ink it up again. And stamp it again. I can keep stamping that as many times as I need to. Sorry, the camera is shaking. I did not realize that. And that will give me my impression. So that's how you're going to rubber stamp the image on here. The ink cleans off with a little bit of water. So I don't have to worry about that. Now that I've got the image on there, I need to cut it to where it'll fit. Depending on the size of book you're making, where you place your pockets, like if you were using standard cards or the narrow cards, you're going to have to fit this in there. Of course, you could take it and use mats and place it in there that way. But what I did was I found that one of my, and this I've had for years, I don't even know where I got it. It's a die. And I die cut this out on my die cut machine. So let me place it. For those of you that haven't invested in a die cut machine, may I suggest that you do? Uh, there is nothing that makes a prettier, and I'm using uh, a post-it note tape or repositionable tape so I can place it and it won't move. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. And but the die cut machine just does a beautiful job of cutting out your image. Let me grab my machine. And yes, I'll do this on camera too. Because some of you aren't familiar with it. Let me expand out a little. Alrighty. So, this is the plain big shot. Nothing fancy. Can't get any more simple than this. I have a plastic shim underneath it, another plastic shim on top, and this particular big shot is probably, now I'm sorry, the camera's going to roll a little around. I've had this big shot for probably 10 or 11 years, so it's not applying as much pressure as a new one would. So I have to put a couple of pieces of paper on top of my shim, and that gives me just enough pressure to make a pretty cut. Alrighty, pull off the rest of my post-it note tape. Voila! Now, we're going to place that inside of here. So, we don't want it to stand out as a sore thumb, so we're going to take our distressing again. And let's distress the edges of it. Did you know when you pull off the backing of your double side adhesive uh, paper that 
this piece right here is resistant to both ink and glue. So it's a good surface for you to ink on and the glue on. Let me grab some more ink without getting it all over your desk. Especially the score tape brand. It is the bestest. I have even gone so far as to take this because this side doesn't resist anything. And I glue this down to a piece of scrap chipboard and have, have it sitting beside me to where I can use it to ink on. Just a nice surface to do that with. Just FYI, a little tip here and there. All right, now I'm gonna mount this in here. I'm just gonna use glue. This tape, <laughs> the um, super glue has got stickiness all over my fingers. Now you could use mounting foam if you'd rather I'm just using glue. I'm going to place it to where it's nice and straight. Then I'll bring it back in camera. Oh, that looks lovely. Just like that. Between alrighty and just like that, I guess you get tired of hearing these little comments. I would not pass a speech class, that's for sure. Now, to add the embellishments, I use a ribbon that I have buttons already on. And I just simply use Fray Check to keep it from unraveling. I also use Fray Check on my seam binding ribbon, but I cut it and attach it there. And then what I did was I took my scissors and I cut around the button. You can see how easily it frays. I turned it over. I put Fray Check there. And then I glued it in place on here. Now, if you don't know what Fray Check is, you can get it at any craft store, probably even Walmart, I don't know. And it takes a few minutes to dry. I just apply it to the button there. Hopefully you can see it. And then when it dries, I can clip off the extra fine tips of um, the fabric of the ribbon turn it over and glue it in place and yes art glitter glue works beautifully to hold your buttons on absolutely beautifully and then I took an enamel dot it's a self-adhesive enamel dot and put it there and you can see I even used a row of the ribbon back here I did that deliberately with the buttons you could just add buttons down through there if you want to because what that does it makes your pin less flip-floppy. It tightens it up. So if I were to turn this around to where you could see it, and I applied this underneath it, look how much better it holds. So you may want to look at adding a few buttons down behind that to make it hold firmly in place. All right. Now then, that's going to conclude the inside of our book. I'm going to stop the video at this point. And I'm going to do a separate video of the outside because I think that that deserves its own little bit of time uh, for decorating it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will try to post a cutting guide uh, in case you missed any of the cuts or score lines. And I'll try to also put the score, the um, pocket size for standard cards on there as well so that you can use that for reference. Because the other little gadget that I made... The single card one this was a standard card size and I'll put the posting I'll post the cutting guide for this one as well so that you can see the difference um, again I had trouble getting a pad that was narrow enough and where it all fit nice and neatly inside Plus, I did not like the two pencil box. I like the single pin box. That way you can it won't roll around as much. And I'm not going to put this in the cutting guide because I think this other one works much better. And I decorated it, but I did make this one out of the brown artisan cardstock. So I'll post, like I said, in the cutting guide, the two different size pockets for the cards so that you can see. Um, you can use whichever one suits your needs. 
and I hope that you enjoyed my video and that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel below. Uh, there's a button for you to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up, please. And if you uh, would like to click on the bell, then when I share a new video or tutorial, you'll be notified so that you won't miss it. So don't forget to check out the link to Country Craft Creations below and look at their exclusive paper line, especially the Love Letters um, paper line, but they sell all the supplies. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll have another YouTube video up shortly of how to decorate this cover. Thank you. Bye-bye.